Low Poly is the name of the game. And we need to cut down on a lot of polygons here. I think back here we can actually make this guy out so we start seeing that those muscles you know, that, that actually line up back there. See that? Uh, Slick CJ, uh, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, we're definitely going to be adding more leaves sticking out of his arms and on his back, and uh, uh, this is just a, a concept art that we're going to be refining as we create the model and see how it actually works in 3D in game view and change whatever design properties we need to change so that it comes across as the best possible gorilla we can make for the game. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is definitely a good direction, and we're going to use that and polish it as we make the model. Alright, let's see if we can make those back legs. Or at least start them. Um, a good spot to do next, I guess, is to round out where the crutch <laughs> is gonna end for this guy. So we'll just make a little... Whoop, whoop, whoop. Little gorilla butt. I don't know which way these guys are facing, so I can just kind of eyeball this, this rotation blindly. Pretty good. And we'll probably want to flatten that out a little bit. Like this jelly bean kind of shape that you see in all Disney cartoons. That's how you always start making this jelly bean form and then you keep drawing for that if any of you guys are classical animators. Actually, the human body works this way too. You do two jelly beans, well, two uh, kind of spheres that create that jelly bean. So you have your rib cage, uh, and then your second kind of round part for your to uh, for your pelvis, and then your spine kind of like moves those guys back and forth. And then you know when you move the top jelly bean part, you see your ribs stick out, and those are the main shapes that you'll see classical animators uh, draw from. Maybe a for you guys. I've been doing this type of work for 15 years now. You can see that on the FAQ right below. And it includes my past studios that I worked at, and past works, and games that I worked on, etc.
Uh, I did not work on SOTOR, the Knights of the Republic. I worked on uh, Star Wars The Force Unleashed 1, Cold Edition, and 2. Backups of our backups, and we never lose any work. Now I'm trying to give this guy a little more weight. He's feeling kind of flimsy around the belly section, and we want that big belly, so he reads more like that, you know, squirrelis. Yeah, once we get into Seabrush, you'll see some really cool sculpts and some really nice details, and me breaking into the bark and all that stuff. Uh, so that'll be a definitely a pretty cool um, broadcast to do. Hopefully, you can do that in the next couple days. I do have a YouTube channel uh, for all the new people in the channel. Let me do a quick little rundown. Uh, oh, let me hide this little guy. And I'm gonna direct you guys over to the liveworkshop.com, which is uh, our website. Uh, and in the website, you can see uh, advertised is our latest set that we got into the game. It's the tools of the Mad Harvester for Pudge. And you, on the website, you can see all our past broadcasts. Uh, the last few things we've been doing was a set for Skeleton King. Uh, so you can see the normal maps and the AO, 
fakes, the ZBrush sculpting for the weapons, the cloth, uh, the face, the shoulder the shoulder pad there, and we have more uh, videos from past broadcasts that cover some Twitter streams where we grab people's work from the forums and we help them out and we uh, fix up part of their topology, the edge loops, maybe the design a little bit, and try and help them to get their their, game, their item into the game. Uh, and then we, you know, we give the, the fat right back to them and they keep working on it. Like they keep posting their previews and their work in progress on the, on the forums. So we're here to help you guys out. We have some featured game items, uh, tutorials. The, uh, this tutorial on here shows you how to rig, compile, publish your items step by step for the uh, Steam Workshop. Uh, so check that one out guys if you guys are interested in compiling some tests that you've created in either Maya or Blender or whatever program you're, you're using. Uh, this tutorial is pretty, ex uh, it works for no, no matter what you're working on because all the files are supplied to you by Valve, either in SND format or FBX or OBJ. Uh, and up here at the top right you can see our YouTube channel, our Twitch channel, our Facebook page, and our Twitter and our Steam Workshop. So you can check all those links out and there's many ways to follow us guys so you never miss a stream. So drop them by and check it out. And make sure to follow us if you haven't hit that follow button yet on, on Twitch. Um, I, it's been sporadically right now, the, uh, the way I've been broadcasting. I definitely want to get a schedule going. I actually have a stream schedule on the website set up up here so I can have uh, all the shows that will be broadcasted for that week. And you guys can actually set a reminder and you get an email reminder 30 minutes before the show starts so you never miss a show. Uh, it's just that my hard drives, I had four hard drives or five hard drives in my computer and four of them got fried by a faulty power supply. So I mean, I sent those uh, hard drives out to a clean room lab and they're trying to see if they can bring those hard drives back to life or at least clone them so I can get my information out of there. But I've been setting up a lot of stuff that I lost uh, uh, that I lost in those drives and setting up all my external work that was saved up. So I did lose, unfortunately, about two to three months work. Uh, no, more like, more like two months. But I had a lot of backups on my external and stuff that I backed up before the International 3, thankfully. So I didn't lose uh, everything, you know, but I lost quite a bit in, in the last few months. Like that ward that we were working for, uh, that thing is in those hard drives. So I need to uh, see if I can get that back or if I need to restart that ward over. Uh, but yeah, that's why I've been kind of all over for my schedule. But hopefully uh, soon I can get this schedule working and we'll have more uh, constant stream for you guys. Hey Carter, welcome to the stream, man. Am I at liberty to say how much I've... No, I don't like to talk about that. Let's just say he's doing really well. And it was, uh, I think, the top selling set. Um, it's pretty pretty damn cool. I'm pretty honored that it got to those heights. So thanks to all you guys and all the Dota fans. Very much appreciated. Alright, let's see where we can put this little leg. Do that. Uh, let's first kind of like draw. Actually, hmm, let's close this up first and then we can draw it on top and then cut it out. I think that's usually the best way to go about doing this. 
finish closing off our little jelly bean. And actually, let's freeze our model so we can work a little bit faster. It starts chugging. Okay. Okay, there we go. Little gorilla butt back there. Uh, what we're gonna do is gonna bring this guy to the back, and we'll draw our leg inside there and then extrude it out. But we're gonna draw that by cutting into our mesh. And it should work out pretty well for us, I think. Part of his ribcage here, so he does that a little bit more. Maybe push in his spine. Whoops, my leg. Flatter, more arched back look that way. And then we get that little... It is shoulder blade, a uh, shoulder blade to uh, stick out that way. Low poly stuff. The arch a little bit stronger there now. Looks like he's actually being supported by those shoulders, and then his spine is kind of like hanging, you know, as if you know this weight is actually pulling down. Because these are the supports right here. So when you're modeling your uh, your idle kind of pose. Uh, keep weight in mind, because it'll actually transfer to your final model quite efficiently. Kind of like half model in there to begin with. Don't let the animators have to do all that work, or ha kind of have to force it, you know? Make it easier on them. Uh, yeah, th this is guy's really hunched over, and we actually want it to be more... Uh, have more weight to it. I mean, uh, depends how we do the the grass. If there's sheets, then those sheets are gonna, you know, be on top of there anyways. Uh, but then those sheets we can kind of like mold so that they're coming out in that shape too, you know, and it gets closer to what how a gorilla would actually stand. We'll get better weight out of them that way. We just, we're just having really small legs in the back so we get a more of a jelly bean shape to him. It's a little more cartoony, a little bit more fantasy. Uh, but that shape, the way that the spine works, should be the same. So I, I don't want to... I, I, I want to keep that reality in the model even though we're doing something really fantasy because it becomes more believable. And weight is one of the most important things. Alright, let's draw our little, little leg here. Hey Elaine, welcome to the chat. We are making a uh, treant for Nature's Prophet. A little gorilla silverback treant. His shoulders will fill up once we do those sheets of 2D stuff. Uh, but right now we're just making the naked bark dude first. Okay, this leg's gonna be a little tricky, so let's kind of picture the attachment place, which is gonna be kind of an oval near the front side. So let's just go ahead and draw that guy here. It's gonna be something like this. Hold on guys, I'm trying to picture it. <laughs> okay, so maybe a little something like that. Like that. And then we just make our cuts. Our butt, a little gorilla butt, a little closer to the end of where that leg is at. 
or bring the leg over closer to the butt. Whatever with, with the side is going to be better for the model. I think the butt's sticking out quite a bit right now, so just bring that guy back a little bit. And we're actually going to indent this little butt. A little butt crack in there. Gorilla butt. <laughs> There we go, a little gorilla butt. Okay. Now we're gonna try and do the extrude this little leg out. Whoops. If we did a good job. And then we're gonna Flip that leg space back over. Whoops, not that far. Because remember, this is the connection and the exit for our leg. So we're just using that as an initial drawing, and then we're gonna actually fix how the leg should actually be sculpted coming out of that. Something like this. This gives us a good, really good start. And then we can bring that right around or back to our little gorilla butt back here. It'll give us this, you know, some nice geometry that follows our jelly bean that we started with. Uh, Elaine, uh, we get 1200 polygons for the in-game version and 2400 for the avatar version. Uh, so if anything for the avatar version I'll just add more polys to the face, but it depends if it really needs it. If not, then I can just stick with the 1200. Uh, so we'll see, that's the last thing that I do really. I just finish everything in the in-game resolution and then if I want to do some, add some polys for the avatar, then I do it just for the head or around the head, head section that would even show up. Adding polys, polygons everywhere else is a waste of time. So if, uh, no, nobody should be doing that stuff. Uh, this program is indeed sub to Marge. Uh, how are you guys liking the, the chat being replicated on the stream uh, right around here? Um, I just, I was just, it's kind of hard for me to judge the resolution when I'm streaming. But I think I got it at a really good spot for you guys. Uh, so just let me know if that's something that you guys enjoy. And I know it's something that the people watching the YouTube replay of this will really enjoy. So that, I, And on top of that, I have to keep repeating the questions for people. So they can just reference that as they're watching the video. Try and get this screen a little bit more out of the way for you guys there. That's big enough for me to see. That's all good. Okay. Character. <laughs> right on. Thanks, guys. Appreciate the feedback. All right. Let's see. Where were we? All right. We're making the leg. We'll do that back here.
for those edges are turning the right way. Uh, just looking at our post here, we got a really dynamic post. Uh, Danny Dem uh, started this concept at the International 3 uh, with my idea to make the gorilla and the art direction of both of us, you know, inputting uh, what we thought would be the, the best result for our gorilla. Uh, so he's got actually, he drew a really cool um, stand for this guy. It was really strong and I like how he angled the legs out uh, with the, the knee support sticking out. So we're, that's something that we're gonna, definitely going to keep uh, as we move forward on our model. Other sections will have to switch so that they work better in 3D, uh, but uh, that's normal when you're using a concept artwork and then have a, an artist do the 3D uh, version of it. There's always design, redesign work that needs to happen at different stages. Now I'm trying to make this thigh seem like it's really being integrated with or integrated with uh, the belly and the spine. So making some of these edge loops kind of like follow it a bit better. So when we extrude, it, it just fit. more natural. As we do that we we'll always remember to uh, not go super high on the on the polygons and actually reduce them if anything. Okay so as we keep extruding you know you start getting some really messed up parts so we gotta delete those and then actually start drawing them ourselves. And back here we won't really see all that often, so I'm going to go ahead and reduce the polygons down there. So I don't need that many polygons for it. We're getting a pretty good area defined for where our light comes out. And we actually might want to angle it. Oops, one. Pull like a bit more, so that it kind of like sticks out and follows that. A really cool pose in the concept. Right now we're just worrying, you know, about this little the thigh going into the knee, and then we can extrude from the knee and make the rest of the leg. I like the little gorilla butt we have going on in this guy. <laughs> Alright, let's continue with the leg. A 
We'll make this really low poly. We're, we won't have that many polygons to continue on here. Thigh being a little bigger than that. Mayo. Gorilla, so hips. The, the way that the thigh connects to the butt is a little different than if it was with humans. But. We have this like double jointed leg, which is gonna kick our butt for poly count. Uh, we're actually, I think, we're heading uh, a little too far back from the leg. We're blocking this guy in. We can keep messing around with the location. Be a little bit lower like this. Making sure that it stands out and sticks out away from the body a little bit. I like that. Yeah, see, you think treons are small units, but let me uh, let me show you something. Whoops, not that. <laughs> Check out the size of the treant, man. It's the same size as the hero. <laughs> yep, I know they just look smaller. Any little arms and stuff, but uh, I made this little uh, square. So we can see, you know, just stay within that space. And we are staying within that space, so we're we're doing okay. Good eye though, man. It's something that definitely that we need to consider as we as we create models for Dota and I am. Uh, it's not good to have triangles on meshes. It's uh, pretty, no, it's not, not something that you want to have, but you know when you're making low poly models, it's okay to have triangles because uh, you just don't have the polygons to make everything into quads. Um, so yeah, I mean if you have the poly count, then yeah, try and make more quads because it's better for lighting for engines. Uh, but you know if you can't, then the triangles will do fine, especially for really low poly stuff. I mean there's no way around it. You just have to make uh, the best best use of polygons that you can and model those edge loops in a way that you can really see uh, the lighting affect the triangles. Getting used to this keyboard, guys. Pain in the butt.
There we go, that's feeling a little bit more together with the neck and the body. Uh, I like how the edge loops were creating a really square kind of front. I want it to be nice and round. Now eventually you gotta close the mouth, and uh, with low, low polygons that always becomes a bit of a, a problem, but we'll do the best we can. As long as we get that nice silhouette, the teeth coming out, the tooth coming out, uh, the roundness on the mouth remains, and then when we have the animations actually opening and closing the mouth and chewing our leaf, uh, we don't deform the mesh too bad, or if it does, then we do it down in the area where you can't really see it. Here we can round that up a bit more. As I rotate and you can see where the mesh disappears, that's where we start bringing the mesh across. That's looking pretty good. Like our mesh got, or these verts in the middle got a little out of whack, so we're gonna serial those guys back out. There we go. Oh, it looks merged and we're, we're working up the center quite well. Uh, this is indeed a treant set for Nature's Prophet. Alright, I think our back end for this girl is getting a little bit too long, uh, including his backside. So we're gonna. Rank our jelly bean a little bit. It's actually good because his uh, his torso was looking kind of large, and the weight of his uh, chest uh, looking a little bit off. It's looking a little better, and once we do the legs, we'll be able to center that even even better towards the end. Uh, flavor eight, it's his treant. Oh crap. I duplicated twice. So a quick way to check that is to subdivide the model and if two edges appear, 
Uh, you grab those edges and you delete them, and then you bring down your uh, subdivision again, and you're good to go. Now this joint is supposed to be quite thin. Well, as we grab this guy, uh, we're gonna start extruding and scaling this up because this is where his uh, little feet wind up into that little bell-bottom tree, little tree bark that we have going on there. Flatten that out and then angle it a bit more. I think if anything, after we made this, uh, <clears throat> his back, you know, uh, kind of like pulled up and more towards the, the, the center of gravity, uh, his butt got a little too big. We gotta scale that back down. Have this. gorilla butt. <laughs> it's too cute. Okay. More weight to his thighs. A little thin back here, so play around with this till we get a pretty good shape with uh, these very few polygons that we're using. See how good we can make this. Kinda tricky. Uh, yeah, I do interact with the chat. Uh, I just when I'm concentrating, I have to kind of like look at what I'm doing. But I, I tend to I try to look at the chat as much as possible, guys, and answer any questions that come up. Your thigh needs to be a little thicker, holding a lot of weight. Gonna make that thigh more muscular. Mm -hmm. 
and at the same time make sure we don't lose a little gorilla butt. Gorilla butt is epic. And this is gonna have an alpha, so you'll see that kind of like spread out into the floor a little nicer. I'll have to make sure that it's you know, it's a little render then than we had with just these two. And we'll see if we can add more later on. best position for these verts back here. So few polygons is a little tricky. Uh, yeah, I think we got something decent. We could even angle this more, I think. Thighs are kind of important, so I'm gonna give them another little row of edge loops. They help us out.
uh, much lower than you think it'd be. Oh, well, yeah, it's uh, 1200 for in-game and 2400 polygons for the Avatar's uh, uh, viewport model option. Uh, but I won't worry about that till the end. The very, very last thing I do. Uh, we're just worried about the 1200 poly section. And right now, uh, let me exclude that. The, the, um, the fist. Uh, that's, we're, gonna, we're gonna have a closed fist and, you know, grass all over it. So it's gonna be low, low, way lower polygon. So right now we're at 1204 polygons and we haven't really done the 2D planes and all that, so uh, we still need to lower the polygon quite a bit. Yikes, yeah, quite a bit, jeez. We'll get there though. Turn back up. We're uh, reducing the polygon quite a bit. Okay. Are these freaking uh, these vine bots? Do we need to start banning these stupid bots. These are bots, right? Okay, so this fine shit. in here. Harder, you're a mod. You can put those guys out, right?
Uh, right now it's uh, just me on the live workshop, but I am going to be adding more artists to the streams. And we're actually building a stream page right now, which will let you know what artist is live at the moment and what artists other shows will be also on the stream schedule. Uh, so there'll be all sorts of different shows for you guys to watch and set reminders for if you want to catch those shows. <laughs> Lane, how many cats do you have watching uh, Dota now? And then when we make the grass over the forearms and over the back, um, we'll probably end up reducing the polygons underneath them quite a bit more. But just so we have a good start, we're, uh, we're keeping an eye on them right now. Form a little better shape. Yes, absolutely. We're gonna be. This is just. Uh, this is part of Nature's Prophet hand that we just grabbed to uh, to block in our character. But I'm not gonna use this. We're gonna just kind of like grab it and maybe fold some of the fingers and then start welding vertices. So we don't have to do it from scratch. That'd be a waste of time. But yeah, just reusing some parts to speed up our workflow is definitely something smart. Let's see, if you're a gorilla, which way do your fist, which way do they land on the floor? Do we have any reference for that? Take a look. My guess is they kind of like 
that the thumb should probably go towards the inside. So we have the top of the, the palms crossing each other. I think I need a reference of that. This one is definitely turned, but I don't know. Actually walking that. Yeah, then you have maybe one of the fingers kind of stick out perhaps. That would look good from the top. And then we'll we'll delete a lot of polygons once we're done with this section. But it's quick and dirty. Uh, hello guys that just joined the channel. Uh, this is uh, Trian for Urian for Nature's Prophet for Dota 2. And right now we're making the low poly block out from our concept here that we worked with um, Danny Dem. Uh, I helped him art direct it and uh, design, uh, helped uh, co design and art direct this and he drew it and he made a really cool pose for uh, this uh, Gorilla Silverback. So now we're just blocking in our, uh, our low poly stuff and just doing the creating the 
closed fist right now. Kinda hard to see in here, but I've been working with polygons for a long time, so I can kinda see where they're at. Even though they're all on top of each other. Probably still too many polygons, but I don't know. I'll fix them as we need to. Probably too many polygons in there, we'll just close it off. Uh, this is my full-time job at the moment, running the live workshop 
and uh, making some items for Dota, yep. There's still way too many polygons, but I'll reduce them later. <laughs> I am aware of that. Let's merge this with, uh, with the arm first.
Ooh, okay. Uh, four bots. Three. Hi, right, car. Thanks a lot for dropping by, dude. So by having his arm spent a little bit, we'll give the animator a bit more uh, space to uh, to play around with, you know, the, with the, the bending and the length of the arms. So we can put even bring the shoulders higher up when he extends, and when he's running around, and when he attacks, and everything like that. But as an idol, we have a really nice, a good bend, and a good static position. And then we can emphasize more, you know, the weight of him when he walks around and. And even on a on a special idol, you know, besides the regular idol, and have him kind of like maybe reposition himself and arch his back more or less, etc. Hmm. Depending how much we want to hide those hands with uh, the tree with uh, the grass, uh, we can take away more polygons from the hands. But I want to have them there just in case we decide to show them a little bit from the top view. And maybe just have the grass kind of like leave that spot open so we see a bit more detail. Might look better instead of having all four of his, well, his arms and his legs kind of hidden by the grass skirts. So we'll see, we can play around with it, but at least we have those fingers there in case we want to keep them. Uh, indeed, this is a Furion Treant replacement. We've got a good shape going on here. Let's check on our poly count, guys, now that we merged and made the fists. We are at 1500 polygons uh, out of 1200 that we can actually use. So. More poly reduction time. need all these polygons here, so sorry. I'm gonna be as round. That's okay. Really don't need all these polygons. This guy either, right?
crap, let's actually join together. Oh crap, we just crashed it. No, we're good. Okay. Let me save this before we actually crash. Working a little too fast there. Thanks, Breaker. Appreciate that, man. How do you like it? Hello, buds. Zero or eight zero zero or eight zero eight. Uh, whatever. Welcome to the chat, man. Making some treants. We're nature's prophet. I don't need all these polygons here either. Let's get rid of some of them. Flatten that area out. Go. I'll call it a little bit. Oh, I don't need two of these here. Goddamn train out of the way, it keeps getting in the way as we're rotating stuff. Now we check our top view. And look at that, we're still in that space that we set for the overall volume of the model, which is around the same size as uh, the in game treant. So we are good for collision and overall size. Could even be taller actually, if we compare them. This is actually going to be shorter, but there are shorter treants, like little stumps. Uh, so it's not, it's not a huge problem if we're a little shorter. Uh, we also still have the, the grass to play with, and maybe that little uh, huge leaf coming out of his head somehow. Um, so yeah, I think we're in a really good space so far. Not too shabby. Alright, I will uh, return in two minutes, guys. Hold tight, I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.
And we are back. There goes my USB cable. Oh, okay. Okay, let's see. Oh, too bright. That is correct. We're making a treant for Nature's Prophet. A little silverback gorilla, tree trunk, grass, sporting gorilla. And he's gonna be chewing on this little leaf that we've created for him. I need to replace it a little bit here. A little bit flatter. And make sure that it doesn't look like his tongue either. But he'll be chewing it, so I think we'll be okay. Afford more polygons, we'll add more polygons. Uh, we'll scar some polygons right have to close the mouth as well, which can add more polygons. Crap, 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 crap. Take care of more polygons. We're at it. Silhouette as we do this, of course. And always keep checking our edge loops, make sure we're getting them nice and flowing in the right direction. We'll make your silhouette look nice from every single angle. Always keep checking back and tweaking the, the edges we're doing here on this 2B. Here we're getting nice and smooth. And then these lines. You know, get them wherever they're going. Have them follow each other. Make those uh, shoulder blades stick out a little bit more. Works well. Yeah, uh, right now I'm s I have the left side being sim and, uh, uh, instanced is the word. So uh, yeah, anything I do to the right side is right now being instanced on the left side. And when it's time to do the head and the parts that uh, can't be symmetrized, then I merge them together and I start like you know we'll start making the like, teeth be unique. And the headpiece, uh, maybe going to that little twirl, maybe not, whatever works better for the model. Uh, but it's coming along pretty good. I mean, we just started this uh, a few hours ago and we're almost done with the low poly. I think what we need to do, you know, before we actually call it finished, well, keep working on it actually for the poly count, but then we'll move on to making some test alpha sheets and see how many polygons we can get away with and at what resolution we can do those 2D pellet sheets with alphas on them to create the grass coming out of his back and the grass for his feet and his forearms. And then an extra one for little leaves that will have kind of sticking out every now and then, like some from his uh, forearms, maybe a couple, you know, down his belly, on his back or something. 
but it looks more tree-like and not too much, not too animalistic. But it's a nice merge between the two. But it's it's getting there. Good shapes going on here. Not enough polygons. <laughs> well, that's always the case, isn't it? Zero space. Let's give it a different color, it's getting too big. Okay. And just so we can't select it, we'll throw in a new layer. Create a new layer, and we'll call it. Our ghost layer. Or we can move things to and have them be unselectable and unrendable. So whenever we select, see, we can actually grab it. And we'll do the same for the left side. Right onto that ghost page. So now we're only working with this stuff. We actually want to edit. And we never have to uh, deselect or select the left side by mistake. Get our workflow up a little. Uh, not better than flowers. <laughs> I, but we'll try. Flowers are kind of cool. I, I have, I think, I have three sets of flowers. How long do I already do stuff like this? Uh, I've been making, I've been in the industry for 15 years, uh, so you can read on the FAQ, the fact below. Uh, so yeah, check that out. You can see more information about myself. Butt sticking out. <laughs> Make me laugh every time. Man. Let's see how our poly count is doing. Thirteen hundred and fifty. Ouch. Eesh. I guess that's because you can have five, well, I guess ten Brienne's spawn at one point. So we can make them super high poly, or at least uh, I'm sure that's why Valve set this li poly limit, which is kind of low. Especially when couriers have like such a huge amount of polygons you can play with. But yeah, there's only, you know, at least two couriers on screen at one. Well, I guess you can always build more, but you never really see them that, that many being spawned. Unless you're destroying the other team and they're in the fountain. Uh, Hiding and they just start spawning couriers because they have nothing else to do. Um, but yeah.
Oh, right on. How's the look from the iPad? Let's see. Biceps looking a little bit weird. Our elbows are in a good spot. Little bit off. Make sure those edges are facing the right way. Um, uh, uh, well, I gotta say, most of it will be artistic ability. Um, because, you know, eventually you learn how to use the program. Uh, it comes down to how you can interpret, you know, using the tools for the program that, you know, everybody can learn uh, to your advantage. You get that idea out of your head and onto the polygons and onto the shapes and the silhouettes of the model. So it's, it definitely comes down to being artistically uh, talented and uh, have practiced more than anything under your belt creating models. Um, so all that comes, you know, after you learn the tools, because most of these tools can be applied to any 3D program that you use. Uh, that's why streams like this are, are really uh, helpful, regardless of whether you're using Blender or Maya or uh, whatever the, whatever program you're using, you know, seeing techniques are... Uh, the techniques are really important, and they're universal.
Uh, better feel. This is a tree end for nature's profit. And it's gonna have uh, grass and all this cool stuff on it. It's gonna look quite way different than tiny, so I'm not too worried about that. Not worried at all, actually. If you're already sketching, drawing, and painting, uh, I would suggest uh, you pick up um, Photoshop or Painter or uh, any any lower end painting program and start transferring your uh, traditional art skills onto a digital format. If this is something you want to try out, um, transferring your skills over doesn't take that long. So yeah, try out. Uh, pick up a tablet. You can get a uh, a Wacom tablet or one of the cheaper versions of the Wacom tablets. Or there's even like different version or different companies that make tablets that are cheaper than Wacom's. But I suggest Wacom's because they they are the best. And start practicing. And once you learn Photoshop and you start getting the idea of how digital programs work with their layers and everything, you can pick up a 3D program and start transferring your sculpting skills or even your 2D skills onto that. So it's it's not impossible. No matter how late you do it. Art is pretty universal. Uh, hey, Predicator. Yeah, he's totally eating some uh, some leaves. Some pastito. <laughs> Welcome to the chat, man. I think we need to angle this down so we see it more. More angles, yeah, there we go. Maybe even curve it. Oops. Nice curve like that. See from the left side. Camera left, stage left. some nice silhouettes from all angles now for the leaf and as he's animated in his idol he'll be chewing it too so he'll be moving around which is gonna be great there we go that looks nice To add a little tooth over here. Well, we'll go ahead and cut right here. Hmm. Rude, perhaps? Not too much.
can pull this up. Really tricky part. A lot of turns going on here. a better way to join the mouth there. I think we just need to close this a little bit more. that little tooth kind of sticking out from the opposite camera angle. It'll give us a nice little shadow right underneath there. Create that kind of like jaw that sits there. So we can even trim this edge perhaps. paint stuff in, paint stuff out, and this way the polygons look fine. Correct. Yeah, I think we're in the right, right track here. We're still really high on polygons, so we still gotta fix that. And I just added more polygons, actually. Uh, but that's alright. We'll get through it. I'll end up losing uh, the inside of those fingers, unfortunately. Just looking at the polycan right now. We are at 1300. Or we're 162. Or 131 polygons over. A lot. Crap, 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 crap. Part looks like a duck. Are you talking about the feet? Like these guys? Well, these are gonna be like grass things, so I don't I don't know what else would look like a duck. But <laughs> besides that part, a duck. Come on, man. <laughs> That's it.
Um, I'm not saving the polycan for the leaves yet. I'm actually just trying to get the base model to be some, you know, to leave me with a couple hundred polygons to add leaves with. But I'm already a hundred polygons over, so I need to start getting really aggressive and taking a lot of polygons out so that I can add the 2D grass sheets in a bit. Oh, my goodness, we are gonna have a lot of polygons for this guy. I have a really cool idea and concept for this guy, but uh, a little aggressive for the polycan for tree ants. Maybe we'll end up losing a lot of polygons on the fingers and some fidelity around the top half. The lower half is already really low poly. Not much I can do down there. Yeah, there is some on his hands. I mean, there's not that many, but let's, let's take a quick count. Hands, 